Podcast by Friday, episode 14. When you have a Facebook group, you have to be concerned with whether or not you are able to move the listeners over to an email list or something that you control, because Facebook could shut you down tomorrow. Podcast by Friday with Bill Griggs and Kingsley Grant. We help people to create their minimal viable podcast by taking bold action to defeat procrastination to get their voices heard. I am Kings of Grant. And I'm Bill Griggs. And we are the hosts of Podcast by Friday. If you want to fish, you should go where the fish are. And the same thing applies for traffic to your website or podcast. Perhaps the biggest pond to fish in right now is Facebook. Everyone is on Facebook. Millions of people from every walk of life. And if you talk about your topic on Facebook, people will listen. But there are some pitfalls involved. And we discuss some of them today on Podcast by Friday with Kingsley Grant and Bill Griggs. One of the areas I have struggled with for the last you know few years is, and I've heard a number of people talk about the very same thing, their email list. Mm-hmm. is building that out because people are so nowadays guarded with their email addresses. They have had so many spams and, and all of those things. So I find that it's easy to, easily said, but it's, it's a very challenging thing to do. How do you get those people from, you know, onto your own property, your own email list and build out that? Because, you know, I was speaking to someone yesterday and what she's trying to do in this very same topic is run a contest to give away some books for her audience mm-hmm. to, in exchange for their email address. And there are, have to be creative ways. And, and so what are some ways you have found are, that are most effective to get people into your email list? Because I think we said earlier that this is one of the things that we believe, and we've heard people who are like a Pat Flynn or these big guys will say, if they could go back and do anything different when they first started their business, I've heard over and over and over again, I would build my email list much quicker, much quicker. Yeah, they would they would launch without an email list. And we were just talking a moment ago about my um, CNC router tips uh, group on Facebook. You know, it's it's been growing very quickly. I've got 4,100 people or so on, on the list now, but it's a private group. But they're on Facebook's list. They're not on Bill's list, necessarily. Um, So I had to come up with ways of finding interesting content or or an interesting lead generator that would encourage new members of my Facebook group to sign up for my newsletter or for my mailing list. And um, that's that's not an easy task. Uh, because the way that Facebook groups are structured, there is no automatic button that you can put in there that will allow them to just click and join your mailing list at the same time. Because uh, Facebook group views these people as their users. When you have a Facebook group, you have to be concerned with whether or not you are able to move the listeners over to an email list or something that you control. Because you're right, Kingsley. Facebook could shut you down tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've I've felt the wrath of Facebook in the past because they have actually locked me out for, I mean, for a few days, I, almost a five, three to five days up thereabouts where I had no reason. They had no explanation. I'm thinking they can randomly just say, hey, you know what? All right. For whatever reason we decide, you no longer have access to, to your Facebook um, group or whatever for a few days. They put you in, I call it Facebook jail. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and so while you're there, and and you can just lose everything you had, and that's why I think it's so important to not build your business on anybody's land, rented space, because they could evict you tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah, and that, you know, it's not just Facebook; it's YouTube, it's um, yeah. Amazon, it's it's every service that is not owned by you um, that you build up a community around. You also have to have another way of getting that community onto your land, onto your uh, um, website as well. And, you know, whether that's through the mailing list, or uh, which is probably the best way, or um, 
you know, by having a, a forum or some other activity where they can interact with you. But I think also, though, where you can have incentives for them to go to your face, your your email or get something in exchange. Because, for example, you can um, set up, I know in Facebook pages mm -hmm. where a person can click on, you know, like a button that says, okay, join my mailing list or get this, get this download or the case, that, whatever that might be. But you could also in your group in Facebook is put in your pin, pin something to the top of this, of the page where no matter what happens, a person comes there, they will see that automatically when they join the group. And like, I'm in a group right now. And what the guy who runs the group does Every new member that comes in have to well, – no, they don't have to, but he gives them an opportunity to get his free download by clicking the link that he has in that pinned article that's at the top of the page. So it's one way to kind of expose people who are coming to that group to possibly, again, exchange what it is you want to offer them for their email address. I'm not aware of that technique. That sounds interesting. I'd have to see how that worked. I yeah. know that there there's a difference between a Facebook group and a Facebook page um, and what you can do on each of them. For CNC router tips, I have both a group and a page. And on the page, which is a link to, you know, obviously my website and some of the content that I'm putting out. So on my Facebook page, I have a button that, um, you know, it's a sign up now kind of button um, that, uh, allows people to directly subscribe to my uh, my email list, but I can't do that on my Facebook group because it's it's just not allowed. So yeah, but you can, like I mentioned before, that like, you know you can pin an article to the top of the page in in Facebook group. Yes, you can. And so in that pin, you can have a link that says "Get my free download," or you know, and and that link takes you the person to a landing page. That's on your website, and they can now get that information from there, which they have to exchange your email address, their email address for, to mm -hmm. get that art, to get that thing, yeah. whatever that might be. Yeah, that is definitely a way of doing it. I uh, <laughs> I have to uh, research that a little bit more. I haven't been doing that, um, so you know, we'll test, test, I think test. Something because for you, uh, uh, Bill. Because, like I said, you know, it's so important to realize that tomorrow morning, even though you have over 4,000 people in that group, but they're really not yours because Facebook owns that and they own them. So really is how do you convert them into your, onto your own land? I think the whole point here is how do I convert, you know, because the whole purpose, I believe, of podcasting, we're not doing it for our health. We're not doing it because we want to just have – you know, we could find other things to do with our time and, 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 and other resources. We're doing it because we're thinking of a business. It's really a business. And if it's not a business, it's really an expensive hobby that takes my time and my money and all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I, I, I'm myself thinking about how do I convert these touches, you know, these individual touches, whether it's a an audience or a a, a, a a post, whatever. How do I convert those touches, those touch points, into a pos a potential business opportunity? And I think that's where we have to maximize and find ways to do that because it turns out just to be, like I said before, a hobby. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for a hobby that I really, you know, I could do other things if I wanted to, but this is a business in my mind. Uh, in my my mind as well, <laughs> yeah. No, there. It's it's definitely you. You have to come up with ways of, of doing this uh, if you intend to grow. And you know there are so many different avenues to pursue. Um, one of the methods that I've seen that has been effective, and and I'm going off on a slight tangent here, but this I'll bring it back in. <laughs> <laughs> at the end. So um, I read this book by um, uh, Ryan Levesque, and it's called Ask. His whole thing is to create survey funnels in order to get people onto his mailing list. So 
His whole thing is to create a single question survey that requires the person not to just type, but to, you know, expound on what it is that they're they're thinking of. And one of the tools, I told you I was going to bring it back around, one of the Mm -hmm. tools that they... uh, that they do give you in Facebook groups is the ability to create polls. So um, the reason this is is on my mind, because yesterday late, about 15 hours ago, as a matter of fact, (laughs) okay, I got the idea because I'm I'm working on a project for the CNC router tips group that helps people to take a financial goal that they're going for using their machine And to reach it, you know, how to break it down, how to analyze it and figure out how much you need to create or what you need to create in order to hit your goal. Okay. So the question I put up was, when you picture your ideal realistic income from your CNC business, what are your yearly figures? And I gave them some options between this amount, this amount, you know, the higher amount. The surprising thing is that everyone, the the majority of people who placed an answer to this survey, which was a, a multiple choice instead of a uh, instead of a uh, response based survey, most of them were compelled to also comment, and the comments are really telling. Uh, when you mm. get a detailed comment, yeah, um, you know that that person is really engaged and and, and wants to um, participate in whatever you're doing. But um, let's see, 36, 34, so that's uh, 70 plus 28, let's call it 30, so that's 100, and we've got more than 130 responses already in 15 hours. Wow. Yeah, to this survey. That's great. Yep. So the other thing it does is there's two categories that are running neck and neck right now. And those two categories scores pretty much outweigh everybody else's. So I know that if I were building a product now based off of just this 15 hours worth of data, it would be aimed at those two groups. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because they have the most responses. They're the the most people are interested in. But I would also consider doing one that was aimed at one of the lesser ones that had really engaged comments. So, because I know that that group is engaged, I may have a smaller market there, but I might be able to market to them better, more expensive things. Yeah. But, you know, uh, Bill, really, uh, something you just um, highlighted, which I think is really in- interesting, because you and I have been in this space for quite a while. Mm-hmm. We have also been in, in a group and in groups quite a while. We've heard these kind of messages have stuck with me. And when we were in the group with the Internet Business Mastery with Jason Van Orden and Jeremy Franson, mm-hmm. one of the things we learned there was when we do these surveys that once you have about 20 to 30, thereabouts, 20 to 30 responses, you typically get start getting a repeat of what you have already gotten mm-hmm. earlier. And they were saying, which I've heard elsewhere as well that you pretty much have a good idea of what it is you can now work on with those 20 to 30 responses you have more than that Mm -hmm. so i think it's really to see where are the repeats because there are some repeats i'm sure in those responses and and pick out the 20 or 30 ones that are unique and and possibly now know what it is your uh, your group wants and then give them from provide them with that yeah, that's interesting. I'll have to um, go and look at the data a little closer with that in mind. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For for reminding me of that as well, because I've heard that before, but I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, yeah. That's why it's always great to have an accountability partner. Uh, <laughs> it, it does. I think, like, you know, bouncing ideas, because sometimes you remind me of things and vice versa. And I think that's why it's good to be in community of some kind, whether it's a mastermind community or, or accountability community, something that would help, the, you know, to, to really make you a better person and more successful. Mm-hmm. Now, I mentioned that book, uh, Ask, by uh, Ryan Levesque, and I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes in case anybody wants to go out and, and take a listen to it. Or, or uh, It is available in audio book if you want, but you can get it in Kindle or, you know, uh, in hard hardcover. 
It's a really good book. But I'm going to read the title. (laughs) (laughs) It's Ask, A-S-K, the counterintuitive online formula to discover exactly what your customers want to buy, create a mass of raving fans, and take any business to the next level. Boy, is he promising a lot, buddy. Mm. It, uh, It seems to work. And, you know, how are you going to argue with results? Yeah. And I think going going back to the idea of, I think very clear what it is a person who picks up his book is going to get. And and sometimes if we are clear in what is we're offering to our audience, when you give us your email address, this is exactly what you're going to get. Make it so compelling that that book cover, that book title is so compelling. Who would, would want to resist that, right? So I think it's having a compelling offer to have people want to give their email address up. So it has to be very, th- I, I believe, mm-hmm. very thoughtful in the approach and realize give something of massive value because people are so guarded, like I mentioned earlier, with their email address. We have to convince them. And I think a compelling cover, for example, a, comp- a compelling title like that is mm-hmm. like, man, yeah, I want to know more. Yeah. What can I do to get it? And you, you can apply the same thing to your podcast episodes as well. Uh, if you have a really compelling podcast title, it, it really helps. And from a, a marketing standpoint uh, and from an SEO standpoint, which is search engine optimization for those who don't know. So, you know, trying to get your book found on Google or, or Yahoo or wherever. Each one of those words that you have in there is a keyword that can be searched for. And if you not only have a compelling title, but you have a keyword rich title, you're more likely to be found. And the same applies with your, your podcast episodes or your book or whatever it is that you're trying to do online. Yeah. And that's really what people would call copywriting, right? Good, have a good copyright. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's where I think is the compelling nature, which comes with time. I mean, like, Ryan Levesque book. I'm sure that's not the first cover design or the first um, title he came up with. I think, you know, most people will rework, rework, rework and test and test and see what's better and have different versions of type of titles and so on. And, and it could be offers, different versions of the offer because I may offer a one page PDF. I may mm-hmm. offer a, you know, 10 things, how to offer. You may, you may offer a video on say CNC router, how to do something. And and what happened is that it tells you what it is that people are more apt to go after. And once you have a good feel of that, then you give more of that. Give them more of those things and make it now the giveaway that yeah. you know keep in place for, for quite a while. Yeah, and that you know that is the basis of the funnel. You know, um basically you start out with a wide um a pro, you know entry point for people, you know this very general topic. And as you get them further into what it is that you're offering, you offer them different things that, you know, may appeal to them. Some people may, may like to learn things by listening. Some people may like to learn things by visual, you know, whatever it is, you offer that group what they want. And as it, as they progress down into your funnel, uh, you're giving them more and more specific things that are targeted directly at them. So that by the time they come out the other end, you've given them exactly what they want. And um, with these with these survey funnels, you know you can do exactly that. You don't just stop with one uh, survey. Then you ask, you know, you know, let's let's say for instance in this one that I was just doing. There may be a group that wanted to operate as a hobby, and there may be a group that wanted to operate as a business. I would send them different things. And occasionally I would send them the same thing because it worked for both categories. But the thing, the guy who's trying to do something as a hobby is not the same guy who's trying to make a living at doing something. And so they, right. they have different needs, and uh, you have to provide for that need well, let me ask you a question but i want to kind of jump in fact may here because you you just mentioned something the guy maybe it may be a person who wants it for a hobby or someone who wants it for a business now as the person as a you know your offering would you then try to meet those two 
people's needs. So you're going after the person who wants it as a hobby and the person who wants it as a business. Wouldn't it sound different? It would not be packaged differently? It would. And you have to decide what your business focus is. If if your your business model for what it is that you're providing is focused sh- exclusively on people who want to do this as a, as a business, then focus on that. That's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck than focusing on this other group that just is doing it for a hobby because they're not really your tribe. They're not your people. They're not the ones that uh, that are should be on your list, really. And so I think sometimes it's to know know your your audience well because as an example, I was browsing through Michael Hyatt's um, who is a blogger and you know pretty much a very successful blogger. I was browsing through his site recently and just see how he writes certain things and and he has an audience that he f- goes after. It's pretty general, but he has four specific areas he targets. You know, I don't remember all four. Mm-hmm. And one is in leadership, personal development, and something else. And that's what he does in everything he is blogs, his podcasts, everything he does. And he knows who is go- he's going after. Now, if someone wants to get into a hobby, then they can find something of value there. But he's not writing to them, he's not really making them the target of what he he knows who is going after. And I think sometimes we get sidetracked. I know I do sometimes <laughs> when I, I figure very easy. Oh, you know, yeah, who is it I'm going after? And I think in time, because Michael had been doing for many many years, you can't compare you know apples and oranges, or his middle with my beginning. So the point is that over time you get better at it and get a better feel. That's why we say get started today. Get started by Friday because that is what's going to get you in the game. So we talked about in our last episode about the five things to do. And one of those things is to get in the game right away and don't wait. So that will help you to figure out down the road what it is you, your audience really need and who you're really going after. You know, so you kind of chip away and, and call the, the group to get to that one person, one place that you can spend your time and energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it if you don't know who your audience is, then you are spinning your wheels. If you don't know who your avatar is, who it is that you're trying to reach. I mean, we could do a whole episode on just helping people identify who their, who their avatar is, who their target um, market is, who their listener is. And, you know, some people go, even go so far as to name the person, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going after Joe, the, the, uh, this, you know, the CNC guy who does this or that, or, or I'm going, you know, whatever that is, you really have to focus on who they are, what problems they're experiencing, what kind of help they need that you can provide. Yeah. And, and, and solve that one problem, start with one problems you can solve with that person. So what might be the one thing they need to solve right away? And you can solve that just sort of for the very minimal problem you want to solve and do that. And then later on, you can add more problems as you go. Mm-hmm. And you, you've got to talk to people and, and and try and understand their problem because people automatically believe if you know more about it or if you understand all the aspects of their problem that you will have a solution or you'll be closer to a solution than someone who just running across it for the first time. We don't know everything about building podcasts, but we probably know more than you do because we've been doing it a little while longer. So our goal is to help bring you further down the path to getting your podcast out there. That's what we're all about. This is the section of our show where we would normally pause for a word from our sponsor. Now, if you would like to be that sponsor of the podcast by Friday show and you have a product or service that you feel would be of benefit to new entrepreneurs starting their new podcast and contact us at podcast at podcast by Friday dot com. And we'll see if you'd be a good fit. Now back to the show. Our goal is to help bring you further down the path to getting your podcast out there. That's what we're all about. And, and just sharing different avenues of how you can build your platform, build your business, build your, uh, we started earlier, your email list, because that is so, I believe, critical for our success. 
that that email list, having that is your platform. So if any of these other bigger guys, Google or, I mean, I'm sorry, Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or whoever decide to shut down tomorrow and take everybody with them. And so does your people who are in those groups. Whereas if you have your email list and even if something happened, you can always find a way to email that list and and update them what's going on because they are your fans and they're going to be with you. And so you don't lose and have to say, oh, no, I've lost all my lists. Where do I start? And have to start all over. <sighs> that would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it would be incredibly terrible. I mean, because uh-huh. I look at it between my, you know, Facebook and and uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. I have a, a lot of people who follow me in those areas. I'm thinking, wow, my only connect with them right now is through those platforms. Well, not all. I have some of them who are now on my email list, but majority of them, I don't have a maybe about 10% or less, I think. Yeah, it's less than 10% of the people who are in those three platforms that I use mainly are in my email list. That's really, you know, mm-hmm. so majority of people are not. So yeah. if something happens, I'm going to be losing all those contacts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you've got to, you know, figure out ways to, to get more listeners onto your list. And, you know, you should present more than more than one opportunity for for each of your listeners to to get on your list uh like we mentioned throughout the show you know how do we how do you get on our list uh, and podcast by friday well one of the ways is to go to podcastbyfriday.com and at the top of that page there is uh, an opportunity for you to get on our mailing list by clicking a button okay that's one way I think they can also, like you said earlier, to get a update of the shows as they're released. So they can be aware of those. If they go and get on the mailing list, then we also can get a way to notify them of any upcoming events. So, so yeah, the list on the page is really have access to that. But here are some of the benefits they will receive is an update on any mm-hmm. events we're, we're, we're planning or our podcasts episode we think is very important or a book recommendation we may have i mean there are so many things that they don't want to miss out upon yeah if they really that has to do with podcasts by friday that i think it's it's really uh, critical that they get on the list right away mm-hmm. i challenge you the listener to go to our page podcastbyfriday.com and click the button and get on our mailing list that's my challenge for you today that's if you do nothing else today, I'll, I'll be happy with that. And I think you're going to be happy with it, with the results that you get if you do that. Because of the, the information that we will provide to you that you can't get anywhere else. And the access that you will have to us, Kingsley Grant and Bill Griggs, that you can't get anywhere else except on our list. So that's my and challenge that's why, to you. That's why they go to where they need to go, Bill podcastbyfriday.com and it is one of the first buttons you see on the page Mm. well I think like there are benefits there are reasons why you would want to make sure that you are on the mailing list and like we said before it's our way of point of contact and we can have other ways that we may connect through social media but like we said before should something happen this is a way to make sure we have access to you and you to us. We can continue the relationship, but also provide the value that you're receiving from this show. Mm -hmm. And to receive the PDF that we have created. Yeah. um, You know, that's one of the benefits that you get when you um, uh, sign up for the mailing list, that sort of thing. So, you know, uh, there's a course that Kingsley and I are working on that you'll find out about first. Exactly. On the mailing list, you know, so that's the benefit of of being in our mailing list is finding out, inform, finding information quicker than anywhere else. And that's just a small portion of the benefits. Mm-hmm. They have a whole lot more that comes that will come. I, um, as I said before, in the in the future, that by being on the list, it's going to provide them the opportunity. So let us just conclude with that. 
and and you know it's on them if if they if they want access to us that's the easiest way and that's the best way and we've told them that and so there's no need to beat this horse i agree uh, i agree until it's dead. so yeah if if you'd like to see uh more episodes like this or um, if you have a question for us you can reach us at podcast at podcast by com, or you can get on our mailing list and reach us that way more directly and don't forget to become a part of the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. Podcast by Friday. Take bold action to create a minimal viable podcast today. Check out new episodes at podcastbyfriday.com or on iTunes or Spreaker. 